Hornbill has recently introduced a revamped version of Service Level Management, or SLM, which includes various new functionality and features and gives end users even more flexibility around applying response and resolution targets to requests based on their business requirements. Existing customers may have already set up service levels on their instance, and as with any update in Hornbill, the introduction of this new functionality will not impact any existing service level configuration. However, the aim of this video is to provide five best practice steps for those who have existing service levels already set up, but are looking to utilize the new functionality and the best way to approach this. In this example, I will simply be showing you how to replicate an existing setup using the new functionality, but you may want to use this as a good opportunity to completely rework your service level management configuration. Either way, the same steps will apply. Step one, check the existing setup. The first thing to understand is exactly what you have already got set up. This will greatly assist when it comes to knowing what is going to change, what you may or may not want to reuse in the new functionality, and also it will re-emphasize the areas that you will need to test. There are four key areas here. Firstly, in the user app, you have the service levels. These can be found in the services section of Service Manager and under the service levels tab. Here, you can tell which, if any, response and resolution targets have been set up. It's worth clicking on each of these, to, first of all, to confirm the targets, and secondly, to see if any escalation actions have actually been set against each one. The next thing to check are your priorities, which can be found in the same section, but on the priorities tab. This will show you which priorities are currently being used within Hornbill. Again, you may want to consider if all of these are going to be required going forwards, or if they can need to be reworked. Next, in the admin app, we're going to have a look at the business processes. Your business processes are where the service levels are started and stopped. It's worth being aware of every business process where you currently use service levels, as you may need to amend or cleanse these as part of this exercise. In my example business process, we have two start response timers. The first one is a rapid response timer for a major priority. And the second one is a standard response timer for any other type of priority. Here we also have a start fix timer along with a stop response timer and a stop fix timer. The final area to check are the working calendars and these can be found still in the admin app, but on home, system, and working time calendars. Now in all likelihood, you're likely to just have the one working calendar because that was all that the old service level functionality allowed with a single set of working hours and a single time zone. However, the new service level management functionality allows for multiple calendars. So again, this may be something you would like to review if required. Step two, establish requirements and plan for a new setup. If you are simply replicating your existing setup, this step will not involve too much thinking as the planning has already been performed. It will be a case of implementing it in step three. But if you would like to make some changes, there are a few considerations to think about. Do you need to make any changes to priorities? For example, adding new ones, changing your existing ones, or reducing the number of them? If so, will this affect any decisions in your existing progressive captures or business processes? Do you require different targets for different organizational structures? For example, will you have one set of service levels for one organization and a different set for a different organization? Do you have any service specific service levels or targets? When thinking about service levels, do you need to consider multiple sets of working hours and time zones, which are based on call criteria? For example, will your targets be based on an American time zone if the site of the request is New York or will it still be based on whatever your default time zone was? And finally, do you have any actions that need to occur as the targets get closer to breaching? For example, do you need to send out any emails or move the request on a board? It's best to map out these requirements before trying to create anything within Hornbill and understanding the capabilities of the new SLM functionality by reading through our wiki pages and watching our videos. Step three, configure the corporate service level agreements. 
Once you have mapped out the requirements, it's time to begin the configuration. To do this, I would advise to use corporate service level agreements. You can use service specific service level agreements, but not only may this cause some configuration needing to be repeated, but also corporate SLAs work a lot better for testing during this particular transition. As I am simply replicating my existing configuration, I'm going to build a single corporate SLA with my four service levels included, each with their own response and resolution targets. So to kick that off, I simply click the service level agreements tab, choose new corporate service level agreement, enter a name, a description, and select a calendar and click create. And once created, I simply can begin to configure my individual service levels. Once they've all been created, you'll need to create the rules that define which service level is associated. In my example, I have a very simple setup where I have mapped the priority of the request to define which of my service levels is associated. So if it's a major priority, it will associate my major service level. However, based on your planning from step two, the rules may contain far more criteria and be selected from any number of service levels. Remember that the rules are also ordered. So the first rule in the list will check for the criteria. If it doesn't match, it will move down to the next rule and so on. If you need to configure any new working time calendars, this is also the point at which you would do this to. Step four, test using a test service. Once you've configured your corporate SLA, it's now time to begin testing. To test and not impact a live environment, the best thing to do is to create a brand new test service. The one I have created here is simply called SLA test service, and I've added just one user as the subscriber. This is key because it means that it will not appear for any other analysts or end users to select, either through the user app or the portal. I've created a test catalog item and I've added exactly the same business process and progressive capture to this as one of my live services so that now I have a replica. The key difference with my test service however is the SLA tab. This tab if populated only applies to the new SLM functionality and as soon as you add an SLA the particular service will cease to use your old service levels and begin using the new ones. So I'm going to add my new corporate service level agreement here and I'm ready for testing. The other thing to keep in mind are the business processes that you have set up. If you use a response node right now, you would have specified the name of a specific target to be applied. If this particular business process is associated to a service using the new SLM functionality, then this target is overridden and the relevant service level will be selected based on the rules that you have defined in the user app. Also, you may, like me, have actually defined workflow decisions to select the correct response target. There'll be no negative impact leaving this as they are because as soon as it reaches either of these nodes, the decision in regards to the target will be made by the SLA rules anyway. But after you've completed your testing, you may want to tidy up your business process. So in my example, I don't actually need this decision node, nor do I need two response timers. I can simply use the single response timer and join this up. The single response timer I do use, I would just simply set to auto rather than specifying an individual target name and the SLM functionality will do the rest. This is exactly the same for the resolution timers. Once configured, I can now go away and test my configuration by raising a new request against my test service. So I will do this through the user app, raise a new incident. Select my test service here. And simply log the request. And when it appears, you can tell that the new SLM functionality has been applied because it gives the name of the SLA and the targets in a different format than before. And you can also take advantage of the new features, such as the ability to change the SLA by clicking on it 
even once it's been applied. Step five, apply the corporate SLAs to the relevant services. Once you have performed your testing and you're happy with it, the final thing to do is to go through your live services, click the SLAs tab and apply the new corporate service level agreement or agreements if you have more than one of them. Remember, until you apply them, any request that you raise against that service will continue to use the old configuration. And when you do apply them, the new SLAs will only affect new requests that are raised. Any existing requests that you have raised will be unaffected. If you have multiple SLAs to a service, you can also set rules at this level as well to define criteria to pick the relevant SLA to be applied to the request. But rest assured, if you do notice any problems in your configuration, simply remove the SLAs from the SLAs tab and things will revert back to the original configuration whilst you can go back, diagnose where the issue is and retest.